All right, so we're back here at the Prince William Golf Course, part two of this shot commentary. We got a little bit of audio for you, but we're going to work through this. This is uh, the uh, par four, number five, about 392 yards. Burns is the first one up to bat here. We got a pretty open fairway down there, but there is a creek out there, both sides of the fairway, a pond right here where Burns is facing, and Burns ends up back behind that big tree over there. Uh, so he's in his pocket, gonna go search back there in the woods where the ticks live. I'm gonna come up here and again, look how far forward my ball is placed. I'm not liking that and that caused me to come way over the top here, but it's pretty wide down there right around my landing range. So as long as I can keep it away from the water on the left, uh, I know I can clear the water on the right and I did just that. The uh, white marker out there, the 150 marker I believe, uh, is right where the, the water is, and I'm about halfway up that hill. I do have to contend with those fir or pine or whatever those are right in my way. I'm not going to have a, a direct shot. So uh, Burns is going to tee up a provision here, and he gets a pretty good strike on the ball. I think his alignment's a lot better on this one. Uh, his swing is a lot more controlled. Gets a pretty good strike on the ball here. Down the center. Center cut, left. What do you got, Burns? How's it feel? Uh, it's good to have it back. So here I am. I got an uphill slope. I'm trying to get up over those trees. I did not pick the right club. I thought I could do, thought I could pop a 50 up over the trees and get to the green, but the stance I end up fatting it, uh, end up up over the trees, which is okay. The result's not bad. Uh, even if I would have shorted it, at least I. Uh, you know, uh, my third shot was going to be running up on the green anyways. I, w I didn't think I was going to get there. So pitch here. I like the swing. I don't like the uh, the tempo of the swing, but I do like the swing. The distance control is good. I end up about 15 feet pin high to the left. Burns chips up. Uh, he hit his third up over the green, ran off the back. Chips up pretty good. Uh, leaves himself about six feet. Here's my uh, birdie putt or my par putt. I'm sorry. About 15 feet, and I leave it about three feet long. Gimme, gimme, Burns gives it to me. Uh, Burns has his uh, six-foot bogey putt here. And he has to rake in a double bogey. So bogey, double bogey. Let's move on from that. This is a par three. This is a par three that always gives me fits, uh, and it's a pretty well-protected par three. It looks pretty standard. It's about 130 yards, but there's no bailout here except for short, 135 yards. Pins on the left, and if you hit three yards too long, you're going to end up in a major runoff down into the thorn bushes, uh, and just off the uh, right side of the green is that same pond that we are contending with on the fifth coming up. So really the only play here, it's a back pin location, is to play it short. That's exactly what I was trying to do, play a soft eight, and I ended up catching it a little too fat. So, it, and that's really what ends up happening to me every time I try to do those controlled swings. I'd rather just like to take an 80% or, or a standard swing and go at it. Burns ends up coming way across it, looping way across it on this one. Uh, it ends up okay down in wh what should be the bailout, which is short right, but he caught it really fat, ends up short of the right bunker, uh, the defense bunker. It's a really, it can be a tough green to hit sometimes. I mean, there's just a lot to contend with. Um, this is actually Burns' third shot here. He flubbed a chip, uh, flubbed a pitch from right behind that bunker, and he hits a better pitch in this position, uh, does what he normally does, which leaves himself... Pretty good putt. I've got myself a long uphill putt here, about 30 feet. I'm just trying to get within some sort of good range. I've been putting well from, from six, five to six feet, so as long as I can get in there, I'm okay. Burns cleans up. Actually, I think he two putts it from here. Let's see. Yeah, he, he two putts it from there, so not another hole that, he, uh, that he's happy about. And then uh, I miss this one, and I'm able to drag it in with a gimme gimme. He just gives it to me. So let's move on. Prince William Golf Course. I mean, somebody obviously ran into this with a uh, with a cart. All 
this is a pretty open, uh, pretty open 394 yards straight down the pipe there. I come across this. I don't come across it too bad. I, I've got a pretty good swing on it. Let's take a look at it. Uh, it's way up front again, and I've started to change that. I need to take that club back further towards the camera, and I take it inside, and that causes me to loop way to the outside. But I get pretty good recovery to position, and I hit that branch right there. But I get back to impact pretty well, which leaves it. I mean, I, I this ended up being something like a 275-yard drive, so it was okay. But I did clip that branch and ended up on the left side of the uh, fairway, just off the fairway in the rough. Ended up being a good drive, but uh, I, I don't like the swing at all. I mean, you you can see where I looped out. Burns lays one out to the left again. And uh, we thought we knew where it was going, and then we got up to what we thought was his ball, and it uh, it was way short, which surprised both of us. Uh, but again, that was a straight push for, for Burns. It doesn't, he doesn't normally straight push the ball. He, he cuts it off to the left. So that was an okay swing. And here we are in the trees. He's going to have to just punch out here up into the fairway, try to, try to advance the ball a little bit. But uh, if he goes straight, he's got trees in front of him. He's got to come out in front of the, the, the cart path, almost uh, horizontal out here, but try to advance it up. He does just that, ends up still in the fairway. Now we, we miss a couple shots here. I end up short left of the green, uh, just came off of that runoff there, and Burns hit his third up over the back. Uh, so I, I've got a pitch on here from about uh, 25, 30 yards, and I'm okay with the result I get here. Uh, it didn't run out the way I wanted it to, but uh, not the type of result that I got back on uh, four uh, when I just couldn't get under myself. So I'm okay there. I leave myself about 10, 12 feet. Burns is coming up over the over the back here. He's generally good with these uh, as long as he doesn't flub it and get into his own head. Uh, and he leaves it short. I don't think he got... He didn't commit to it and come through the ball, so he leaves himself a, a 10 foot downhill putt. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take about a 15 footer here, 12, 15 footer, and I'm uh, really happy with with how my putting is progressing. Uh, doing a lot of putting downstairs in the basement on my birdie ball mat, and uh, it's showing. I mean, you, you got to practice, and I don't generally get time to practice. Burns and I are talking about uh, the strange ball that he's using, which is an eco friendly Dixon ball. And uh, he found one. We thought it was his back there in those trees. But uh, we realized that it wasn't his because it wasn't stamped with the tournament he played at. So we know that somebody had picked it up. We saw a guy right where we thought Burns' ball was playing a ball. Uh, and and I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't his. So we can move on. I got myself a ball. Just got off a hole number seven. Pretty sure somebody picked up Burns' ball and yeah. played it. So... Uh, Burns had to play a lost ball, take a drop, but uh, we, we're pretty sure we know the culprit. I mean, listen, man, go out there, just play your balls, Get check your, your ball, put your own Dixon hand, put your own Dicks in your own hand. Whose Dixon is in your hand? This is mine. So we're playing those. Uh, or Burns was had a sleeve of those Dixon balls from uh, from a tournament that he was playing, uh, and uh, we're not sure about them. So here's a here's a course that I'm playing I'm playing real line balls and he's playing Dixon balls we've never heard of them. This is a really good hole. This is a, a really good hole. It looks easy. It's a 285 yard par three right down or par four right down the chute. Everybody wants to take a driver to it, but the green as you're you're going to see when we get up there is well protected. They've got defense bunker on the left, defense bunker on the right, and a drop off behind it. This is probably the best swing I put on a ball all day. A good. Uh, I think a struck my power hybrid here is a 18 degree, and I end up about 20 yards short right of the uh, of the bunker, uh, defense bunker on the right. Burns had uh, cut one off, sliced or uh, uh, pulled one off to the right, and uh, hit this tree and dropped right down at about 130 yards. But it's a short par four, so it gives him a, an eight iron in, and uh, he ends up short of the bunkers, probably not in bad position. I uh, Burns missed my shot here, but I I pitched up and almost had such a perfect shot here. A, another foot carry, and I would have trickled right down to that to that pin. Uh, but I ended up on the top of that knoll, cleared the bunker. But I'm on the top of that knoll, and I'm gonna have a tricky little shot here. Burns ends up here for uh, laying two, uh, and it's a simple little should be a simple little chip for him up over the bunker. 
and he doesn't catch enough of it and it rolls back between the two bunkers there. Uh, so he's going to have a tricky one. So here I am, another foot carry, as you see I'm pointing it out, another foot, foot and a half carry, and that would have trickled right down there. It would have been perfect. But I've got this squirrely little, you know, brown grass lie, bear, bear lie, and uh, and it's it's going to be above my feet a little bit, and I'm going to be standing, my, my, my back foot is going to be standing on the... Uh, uh, on that hill so I'm checking whether or not I should uh, should should I push a high lofted wedge out there and let it trickle down or putt and I decided putter in hand keep it on the ground see see what I can do otherwise I could really flub that chip and end up going nowhere on this uh, easily scorable hole so I pull out a putter and I like that we're actually thinking about what we're trying to do here and uh, and I end up in gimme range down there with a foot and a half. So I'm very happy with, with that. And again, you know, at, uh, you know, trying to break into single digits, I, I've got to start thinking about, you know, how I'm going to play and how I'm going to approach each one of these shots. And that's what you've got to kind of do. And sometimes you got to, you know, take your medicine, swallow your pride, pull out the putter and just push it down there. Burns has got the same option. He's, he's putting it here. Sh needed to hit the flag there, but he runs it by about four feet. Uh, but he needed to hit the flag there. Holding the camera, one-handed putt. I think I'm four for four on these one-handed putts on these vlogs uh, on Prince William Golf Course. So I'm okay with that. Burns has a you know, squirrely right to left here, and he just pushes it, pushes it just past that, that uh, left edge. And now we're we're down on the uh, par four ninth, and this is a tricky hole. It's all the way downhill off the tee box into the landing zone, which for me, I can't take a driver on this hole. And, and, and Burns, really, when he gets it, shouldn't take a driver on this hole either. The, there's a creek at about 235, 245, so you really got to fly that. You got to catch that on the carry. Uh, and we just can't do that to get to that second fairway out there. So Burns puts a driver out there and hits it pretty well. You know, he, uh, he makes a, a conscious swing thought here that he wants to, wants to hit a draw which he's not going to be able to do, but it keeps him from, you know, psychologically it, it, it puts him where he needs to be and, and his mind gets in the right place and he's able to hit that straight. Uh, so that's a nice little, uh, nice little drive from, from him. I thought it went, I, I think it went too long. I don't think that's a driver hole. I can put a three wood into that Creek off on the right. That's a, that's a runoff, like a, a ditch, an actual uh, natural ditch on the left. There's a Creek that comes all the way up the left hand. And then beyond that, about 10 yards is uh, is Woods and OB. So you really got to lay this up. I take a power hybrid. I put up a good move on it. It's just a small power cut. And I still end up, uh, for my approach, with, uh, which, with if I remember correctly, a six iron distance. So 179 to the middle, 167 to the front is going to be a pretty good six iron to me, but it's going uphill. So let's say a five iron. Uh, to get to the pin is 179. So I've got a gap between my five iron and my my uh, my sleepy hybrid, my little hybrid, which is which is a twenty degree, uh, which goes one ninety, and my five iron goes one seventy five ish. Uh, so I've got to take the one ninety out, and I really should have choked down on this. I thought one seventy nine uphill, it's cold. This might be playing at around one eighty five, uh, so I wouldn't be too far off. It's a middle pin. So I wouldn't be too far off if I hit this 190. Uh, I like my alignment here. I'm I'm actually trying to play a shot off of those left trees. I'm, I, you know, I know I've got a natural cut with these hybrids, so I'm aligning right off those left trees, and I'm aligned pretty good. And I play exactly the shot that I wanted to play. I mean, this thing did exactly what I wanted it to do, and we thought it was good. Still coming over the top of that, which is why I've got that cut. But but I sent it 195. I sent it 190, 195. So it never had a chance to stick the green. It uh, it landed beyond those trees, cut to the you know uh, cutting to the right, and then it, uh, it got a, a bounce to the right. So this is exactly why I said don't pull a driver, Burns. He is uh, it, literally 18 inches away from going into that uh, creek. Uh, it's just not a driver hole, but if you look at that, you've got to carry that creek plus the short stuff to get to the to the next secondary fairway. So you're really gonna to have to carry 260 to get there. And you know, I'm just not consistent enough, and Burns isn't consistent enough to get there on the carry. I don't think so. I would never. I mean, I can get it that far out, but I would never choose a driver there just because more often than not, I'm gonna end up in trouble uh, when I could take a hybrid or a three wood and 
get myself at least a chance for the green. So we're all friends here. Burns is going to pull it back, uh, get some relief from the uh, from the bridge, which he needs. But uh, we don't have to go through the the pomp and circumstance. He is going to, you know, I just pointed out the pin is up there on the left under those trees. He's getting an eight iron, I think. And if you see, he he fats that. He skipped off the ground fat. Let's take a look at this. He's swaying a lot and comes way inside here. Watch how big this loop around. Way inside and then up over the top. And he, he's getting lower in his stance. So he fats it, skips off of the ground, and then cuts that ball at the equator and, uh, and kind of thins it. But it goes nowhere. It ends up over there under those trees. Uh, <laughs> and here we are just uh, breaking each other's balls. Burns invented a new stroke here. He's got a uh, chunky blade. So he's got to get it up there. He, but he, he's left himself something good. He can still, you know, pitch and putt here for a par. Gets it up there. I think he takes a little bit too much of the ground here. His body's too active on that. But uh, but he puts himself in position. Unfortunately for him, you know, he's pin high to the right, but that pin is on a slope that goes down to the left and down to the to the right as he would be looking at it from his putt. So I, I'm 15 yards beyond the pin, 10 or 15 yards beyond the pin, so I need to put a pretty good pitch on here to get up to the green and keep it short enough that it doesn't run off that front, uh, but get to the pin. So I've got myself, I think, a, an open 54 here, and I'm just going to try to get it three-quarters of the way there, which I do, and hopefully it just stops... And it does. If I would have went another yard, if that would have rolled out another yard, it would have rolled out to where Burns is. Uh, so I get another gimme gimme. Burns gives it to me a foot and a half away. So I'm happy with that par. Uh, good up and down from there. Why is that not turning? Did we both see that wrong? I did. I thought it was going to go that way. So did I. Guess this hill makes comes this way. I burns. Yes, sir. So that is Prince William Golf Club again. Man, it is definitely fall in Virginia. It is cold. It was uh, 45 degrees when we got here this morning. So, uh, so that was the that was the front nine. It's a it's a great course. We get a chance to come on out and play. It's affordable. Uh, generally, the uh, they manage the course pretty well, maintain the course pretty well. Great pace of play. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a good time. Especially this time of year, it's always a great pace of play. Especially this time of year. Summer can get backed up a little bit, but... Well, we don't play in the summer here at Degenerate yeah. Golf because uh, while we love golf, we don't we don't have nine hours <laughs> to stand like, out. Literally Northern Virginia. Front nine, Prince William Golf Club. This is Burns and Bear. Degenerate Golf. Let's get out of bounds.